In this video, I want to give you guys a little light on how to combat injuries, how you can work through injuries, and what you should be doing in the meantime with injuries. We want to take a very general approach. I am not your practitioner, and so I do advise you to take the, the advice of your uh, medical doctor or medical professional um, before taking into, into consideration the things I'm saying in this video. A lot of times when athletes are coming back from injury or they have been injured, injured, one of the hardest things to do is come back from that both, both mentally and physically. And we want to address those things in this video. Everyone, my name is Justin Miller. I'm the owner of Legends of Athletics. I've been in the sports performance industry for the last 10 years, worked with over 250 athletes and had a high percentage of those athletes go on to play division one uh, or collegiate level of uh, sports. And so I feel like I feel like I'm a pretty good authority figure in this space to talk about this because if any athlete plays sports long enough, you're going to deal with injuries and you're going to deal with either uh, nagging injuries that are not sideline debilitating injuries, or you're going to deal with injuries that may sideline you for a little while. And, and those are things that we have to work through um, just over the course of a career. And so in, in this video, I want to start by taking um, the National Institute of Health's um, statistics <clears throat> and talk about injuries and injury profiles and things of that nature. Uh, so every sport, whether it's basketball, football, baseball, soccer, what have you, every sport has injury profiles. Uh, injury profile is just what are the most common injuries that people face when playing this sport. As in sports such as football, again, referencing National Institute of Health, football, most of the injuries account for um, incidences from 61 to 90% accounted for lower extremity injuries. The top three injuries in football are going to be MCL sprains, ACL sprains, and then uh, uh, meniscus tears. And that's me looking at this right now, meniscus tears. And so those are the top three injuries. And so that's the knee uh, primarily. And then you can also add in ankles as well. That's probably I, I would probably say that's like number four or five on that list. But with that, you know, that's just the injury profile and makeup of a sport. So if we know that going into the sport, then we know that those are things that we just have to prepare the athlete for uh, in a multitude of ways. And so we can prepare that athlete through mobility training, increasing range of motion, increasing increasing strength through range of motion, and um, and making that player more pliable so that when they get hit and they're in these weird positions, awkward positions, that their body doesn't uh, completely relieve them and 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 basically injure that body part or ligament or or what what have you uh, for the sake of protecting itself and so we can do that through mobility training as as i said before also through strength training so strength training in different ranges of motions in different planes uh things like that just so again so we can be strong and rig and have some rigor through those different awkward positions and then lastly just making sure we take care of ourselves making sure that we do the things off the field outside of the weight room that uh contribute a lot to our success as an athlete what that be nutrition be sleep, be our uh, rest and recovery, things like that. We want to make sure that all those things are on point. And so when we know that going in, then we know how to approach it because every sport has demands. Uh, you have a demand of the sport as well, as well as injury profiles. And so uh, what do you do whenever you're injured and you're sidelined? For me personally, I always say always keep moving, but I also take that approach from college strength and conditioning coaches and also treatment staffs that work at higher levels in college football, college baseball, and things like that. So whenever you're injured, one thing that you see in high school, and this is a resource-based thing, so I don't want any coaches or anything like that to take it personal, but depending on the resources that you have, you may not have enough coaches on staff to work with the injured uh, athletes. Like, of course, as you go through football season, you're going to get more injured athletes. And so you may not have enough staffing to work with those athletes and make sure they're still active and a part of what you guys are doing. Uh, even if that's one hour a day at practice doing things like that, you may also be resource have resource limitations. So you may not even have a training room. You may not have a training staff and things of that nature. And so those things are going to be very great limiters to the athlete. So whenever these athletes get hurt, one thing that I always take into consideration is what body part got hurt, what got injured, and then what can we do to start this process of healing, but also in the process of healing, what can I do as a performance coach or private coach, whatever you want to say, what can I do to make sure that, that athlete is ready to go uh, whenever we get to that point of return to play? So this is my train of thought on how I go about things. In the world of sports, 
speed is the ultimate weapon. Can you harness it? Athletes in need of speed and agility training, the Legends of Athletics has the perfect program for you. If you struggle accelerating, are unsure how to train for results in and out of season, cannot change directions or jump, hit the message button and set up a call and assessment today. With our system, we offer weekly check-ins, scheduled face-to-face calls, mental training, speed-based programming, year-round, in and out of season. I'm Justin Miller, owner of Legends of Athletics. Over the last 10 years in the sports performance industry, I have trained over 250 athletes. 30% of the Legends of Athletics athletes have obtained scholarships at the collegiate level for sport. In the world of sports, speed is the ultimate weapon. Harness your speed with Legends of Athletics through online training, custom online training, or face-to-face training. Be legendary. Whenever I'm, make sure I got my notes right here. Whenever I'm, first of all, I want to know what was injured. So if it's a lower body injury, I already know that everything in the upper half is still alive and well. Now, when it comes to doing things such as like my hand cleans, my power movements, my explosive movements, things like that, I may do a little, I may have to deviate a little bit, but we can also due to residual effects i can also work the non-injured side so that it doesn't completely atrophy and what atrophy means is it doesn't completely waste away or those muscles don't completely basically go into wasting because they're not being used and so you know we may do things i know if a kid has a a acl injury then they're going to be in a knee immobilizer meaning that they're going to have a brace that's up to their thigh that knee is not going to, they, they don't want that knee to bend initially. And then eventually, once we start getting to building that range of motion and stuff back up, then, yeah, we can go into doing more things. But while that knee is in the immobilizer, we want to do certain things like we want to approach this with um, cautious, but also with intent. And so we can do things like explosive uh, movements up top. We may have to use dumbbells instead of using the barbell. So we can still get the dumbbells and then work on just our movement here to here, here to here. Now, again, we we will dose the percentages, so the percentages may not be high, but we want to keep that that movement pattern built into the CNS, so that way whenever we come back, maybe we're doing a power clean, maybe we're doing a hang clean, hang high pull, something like that, we're not completely having to retrain the entire chain. We just have to connect the chain, and that's what my, my train of thought I would love for other coaches to give me your feedback in the comment section if you feel that way. Um, But it's about connecting that chain and making sure that chain stays connected. Um, Because I look at an injury like pulling the power, pulling the the the, uh, socket out of the out of the um, out of the receiver whenever you need power, and so we just want to be able to connect that when they come back and not have to completely rebuild it, uh, rebuild the whole system. And so it's vice versa. It's if it's a lower body injury. Let's say that this kid broke their um <clears throat> broke the up, the upper arm. So I already know they're probably gonna have nine times out of ten, they're gonna have a long cast, meaning that that arm is stuck here, and all I got is that range of motion. I cannot use the hand a whole lot, and by and and even with that, if that bone's been broken, then they're gonna have some nerves that want to come back. So me putting a dumbbell in their hand while they're in cast just doesn't make a lot of sense to me now if we want to go and let's say the pt has given clearance the doctor has given clearance and we want to start introducing some shoulder strengthening and shoulder mobility there we can go with bands and then slowly progress to the to the um to the dumbbells and then barbells things like that but you just have to be smart about it even with that i can still do my curls with an unaffected arm I can still do my presses with an unaffected arm. Again, you just want to be cautious and you want to be creative um, in that respect. Even with this, and this is the whole point of this video, is, you know, let's say that this athlete says, well, I can't work my legs because I have this arm that's immobilized. Well, because depending on where you are and what you have at your disposal, you still can. They have, you know, the lower body squat uh i can't remember the name of it just slipped my mind but you have lower body squat apparatuses and things like that that you can strap to your waist and just pull without using your arms at all just strap to your torso but you also have sleds you can pull sleds again only torso involved things like that and then you can also do your quad uh extensions your hamstring curls 
your Nordic curl, hamstring curls, things like that. It's just being cautious with what you have. Even with plyometrics, I still, maybe I don't go max plyometrics like on a box or on a platform of some sort, but I will go, and this is just off the top of my head, I will go with some moderate plyometrics. So things that we can be doing off the ground, uh, landing, uh, de uh, uh, dip jumps and things like that, I will do that because that's just, again, making the most sense of what we have. And so the whole video, point of this video is to always work with the injuries and not against the injuries, especially like if you're in season and like, let's say they give you a prognosis that you'll be back in three weeks to four weeks and you got injured week one and y'all got 10 games. Well, you know, you're going to come back at some point. So don't completely let your body waste away because when you do that, it's only prolonging your time to get back to the field and then get back to the field of play and feel feel like yourself and you just have to be smart so you know i i, I don't want to make this video too long i've already ran 10 minutes off and so i don't want to make the video too long but i do want to put that that bug into your ear that whenever you're playing you just have to always think like when i come back what do i need to do and like when you let your muscles and body waste away it adds to the mental um, fatigue because mentally injuries take a lot mentally I don't really care what anybody says like it takes a lot to, to to it don't take a lot to get injured but it takes a lot to come back from injury and then just to feel like yourself you'll never feel initially feel like yourself 100% um, depending on the extent of the injury but you can come back and feel pretty good and so you know like I said it's just being very cognizant, cognizant and aware of that but you know you just have to play it smart um, and like I said, don't let yourself waste away because your team needs you. And that's that's needs you and you're ready to go. If you're not ready to go, like it's not even worth worth risking it, honestly. Um, unless you're in a position, you know, where you, you may have to get that film out there. You may have to do whatever. But just remember, even with that, whatever film you put out there, injured or not, that's going on your resume. And so I always tell athletes that be careful of what you do. Um, be careful how you do it and what you present because, you know, you can't take it back. You can only put put it forward. So um, I hope this video helps. If you like the content, like, subscribe, and as always, be legendary.